Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Phil's Recap and Review. This is going to be a review of The Queen's Gambit. I will keep this to non-spoilers. If you have not watched The Queen's Gambit, you're pretty much safe to watch this. If I'm going to get into spoilers, I will give you a really big warning, but basically I will not. I will keep things pretty generalized of my general thoughts about the series. It is a net Netflix series, limited series, so I don't know if that means it's going to be recurring every season. It kind of ends, spoiler, it does end at a conclusive point, so I don't think it, it warrants more seasons, so I necessarily won't be expecting more, so I think it might just be a one-off kind of thing. Um, it is about chess. <laughs> we'll get into it a little bit more, but it's uh, people have been telling me to watch it. It's one of those shows that people have been kind of all over me to watch, and I and I was a little had a little bit of an avergence to watching it at first, but finally getting into it, and I'll get into my thoughts in a second. If you are watching this or watching the channel for the first time, if you want to watch the whole podcast that this is a part of, it's a longer form. You can check that out on the channel. It's a uh, more of a longer free form discussion. If people live watch it right now, they'll be a part of this, sharing their thoughts if they've watched it or just enjoying the random discussion here. So... Uh, and if you want to call and leave your thoughts on The Queen's Gambit that I will talk about on the next one of these roundup shows, you can do that at 781-990-8509 whenever you watch this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or leave a comment in the comment section on your thoughts on season one or the only season of Queen's Gambit and uh, your thoughts on, yeah, your opinions of this season. So many shows right now, it's hard to keep track of them. It's hard to just watch everything because... It's not even always about watching the greatest shows of all time and the show has to be. Sometimes things are just fun, easy watches. And The Queen's Gambit for me is just to get into is one of those things. There's some shows I watch and you sit down and some of the greatest shows of all time. You almost have to, and I'll keep very spoiler free because I know probably a lot of people haven't watched it yet. There's a, there's a lot of shows that you can watch and you have to almost have your faculties with you when you're watching it. It's a great show, but if you're not quite there, if you're a little too sleepy or a little too stony or a little too drunky, you can kind of pass out to it and not pay attention to it as much and not enjoy it on the level that you should be enjoying it. Two shows for me, and again, these are examples for me, are The Wire and True Detective. Both those shows, if I'm not there in my head watching it, I might, I might doze off really easily. And... Those are two two shows that I consider great shows, at least season one and three of one of the two shows. And, and The Wire, you know, is The Wire. So there are shows that are difficult to watch, and there are shows that I need to binge as quickly as possible because they're so exciting. I just can't wait to get to the next episode, like something like Cobra Kai, where I'm watching that, and you're into it. You're like, this is fucking cheesy, amazing, delicious entertainment. I can't wait to watch the next fucking episode. I'm going into it, going into it. But with The Queen's Gambit, I feel like it was a really easy watch. Now, to set up a basic situation about what the show is about, it's set in the 60s, late 50s to the early 60s, that about a young orphan girl that is, that it, we follow her upbringing, you know? And I'm not going to get into any of the facts about her other than to say that she had a hard life to get into the orphanage and she's in the orphanage and she goes to the basement and she meets the janitor and the janitor teaches her how to play chess and she has a natural ability for chess and then we see where that takes her and at the same time the girl has a problem that keeps arising and there's some visual aspects to it. And we carry through her adventures. And we get to see from the perspective of her and from the perspective of the world what chess was during that time period. And how. so if you're into like Bobby Fischer or you're into the idea of chess or gaming in any way, it definitely has a little bit of a touch to it. But it's more of a visuals fucking with your mind kind of situation. It reminded me at some points like like some elements of of um, the movie Ray where you're dealing with someone that with a tragic backstory that's using it as a way of forcing their talent forward as a, as a young actress. She plays a very interesting cerebral kind of character. You have a couple of other actors you know that pop up here and there, but for the most part, it's a lot of unknowns, at least unknown to me. 
And yeah, we, we follow her through her life to a certain extent as as she is a young chess phenom. And anything with friggin' weird little kids that have super-y powers, I'm sold. So I very much enjoyed watching it. Uh, it was, it definitely, the music and the texture of it and the way the show was shot is m- even much better than the storyline, which ultimately becomes at times predictable of where you think it can go, but then at times it does throw you for a couple of loops. But it's one of those shows that's more about I would almost compare it to Mad Men in the way that you're watching it more for the whole overall experience rather than following the storylines because you're it's a period piece. So you're being you're enjoying being stuck in that time and enjoying how they how they film it almost again like a movie like Catch Me If You Can or 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 Mad Men as a show or Boardwalk Empire. Nothing like those shows necessarily except for the way that it engulfs the atmosphere but then it definitely has a surreally kind of quality to it all too in a in a oh whatever it's part it's part of the story and it's very early on in the first episode that it starts the girl very early on at a young age develops a drug problem that sort of carries her through her whole life that has to do somewhat with her talents so that's not really spoiling anything. And in fact, if you read the description of the show, it says, girl, I think the description in Netflix, if you read it, says, says girl with immense chess power struggles with the chess world with a drug problem or something. So, so that sets up a lot of interesting dynamic moments where we get inside her mind and see how, that, how everything is affecting her. It, and would I say it's one of the greatest series I've ever seen? No, but it's very, very good and very well done and fits in with some of those other good Netflix series that are hidden gem kind of series. Like like Mine Hunters is another one if you've never seen it, I think is exceptionally well done in a tight, tight package there. Glow is a different kind of series, but another really fun one. Uh, Santa Clarita Clar- Cl- yeah. Santa Clarita Diet is another really fun Netflix series that kind of gets forgotten about through time because Netflix prematurely canceled it. So I think this fits in good with that whole BoJack and Ozarks, like that series of Netflix shows that are good and deep. It is not based on a true story. It is completely made up. And yeah, I highly recommend, I highly recommend The Queen's Gambit. You'll know by the end of the first episode if it's your kind of show. You know, you know from the tone. But it won me over somewhere in the second episode where I'm like, okay, I'm going all the way with this show. It was an easy watch at hour-long episodes. They didn't, they had enough fun moments that put straight up smiles on my face. And I was like, that's good. That's good. And especially if you have any love for chess, which as a young kid I was in I was never never very good at it but I was in like chess club and stuff and uh yeah I'm pathetic they they used to call me uh stalemate Phil because I couldn't win but I could I knew how to distract at my best in chess I could distract for a long time and avoid getting beat enough to have them quit and we'd say ah oh, fucking stalemate <laughs> but yeah it's fun I highly recommend it check it out the queen's gambit thank you everybody And if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Share the channel with a friend. And share your thoughts on the Queen's Gambit in the comment section below. Thank you, everybody. Bye.